getting my life together. For as much as I've said this phrase to myself in my daily life and use this as a title of my videos, I have some thoughts about this phrase. It's low-key toxic, but before we dive in, let's first break down how it all started. Thank you Shopify for sponsoring this video. More on this later. I first saw Kayla Nicholson's videos in 2017, which was around the same time I made my first how to get your life together self-care routine that went viral. I continue to make these types of videos because I genuinely enjoy making resetting videos and I also genuinely believed I had to get my life together. Over time, I'd fall back on this magic phrase and add it to my video titles whenever I needed a little boost in views. And before I knew it, this new style of content that was once genuine, raw, and exciting slowly turned into trying to keep up with the algorithmic hamster wheel. I also wasn't alone in finding a little boost in views with this video title. Creators within our corner of the interwebs all started making videos with similar titles as well. And I'm by no means taking credit for the proliferation of this phrase, nor am I picking on anyone who has or still uses this phrase. I simply want to illustrate how the phrase grew from something honestly quite harmless and cute to something much, much bigger. It became something aspirational. It became a part of our subculture. So. What's the appeal of getting our lives together? You tell me. No, actually, please let me know in the comment section below from a viewer's perspective. My hypothesis is that the title appeals to all of us because it's a universal feeling. We feel like we're a mess, our apartment's a mess, our life is falling apart along with our mental state, we're falling behind, our inbox is overflowing, and we're not doing nearly enough. Perhaps it's satisfying to know that this is something another human is working through as well and that we're not perfect. Perhaps it's satisfying to see a mini transformation happen before our eyes from the beginning of the video to the end, offering us a glimmer of hope and inspiration. But what if the very concept of needing to quote, get our life together is what's holding us back from actually having a togethered life? I feel like it's good to want to work on yourself that awareness is already the biggest step. I just want us to be mindful of how we talk to ourselves as well. To feel like you need to get your life together, to feel like you need to heal yourself, to feel like you need to do all this inner work means that your life isn't together, means that you are quote unquote not healed or like some part of you is not whole so you need to heal, heal yourself that train of thought we're already setting ourselves up for failure as opposed to i am whole my life is already together but sometimes things get meshy and i feel a little meshy but it's okay and i just pick things up from the floor and like i move on with my life that was a snippet from our podcast voice hugs which beautifully sums up my thoughts the negatively framed self-talk, even if it's minor, amplified across the internet, gathering millions and millions of views, accumulated in all of our psyche over time to become the norm. We're left stressing over what's going wrong and reactively playing catch up forever rather than figuring out how to grow and proactively move forward. So how to move forward? As I shared in the podcast, it's really as simple as reframing our perspectives and becoming more aware of how we talk to ourselves. Of course, easier said than done, but awareness is always the first step to change and we'd be surprised, even though we shouldn't be, by how far a little act of kindness to ourselves can go. This is what I've been telling myself. If the end goal is to get this thing done, you have the power to control how you get there. Do you want your journey to be riddled with anxiety, guilt, and shame? Or do you want your journey to be filled with calmness, peace, and joy? If I need to clean up my apartment, I just clean my apartment. If I'm falling behind on work, I make time to catch up. I'm not a messy human being whose life is falling apart just because my apartment and work are not as quote, together as I like it to be. Since I've sworn off using the phrase getting my life together and focus instead on small ways I can set systems to improve my daily life, something very magical happened. 
The five minutes of tidying every night left my apartment consistently clean for months, and you guys know this is a big, big feat. The 10 minutes of review my calendar every Sunday gave me peace of mind for the upcoming week. And because my apartment is already clean and I'm feeling relatively on top of work, I can actually have a day or two off over the weekend to do anything. Not being in a constant state of needing to get my life together and untogether gave me more space to breathe, reflect, and dream. With the breathing, reflecting, and dreaming over the past few months, I've come to a couple of important realizations. Realize I've been stagnant for a while. You know, it's like everything that was once new to you becomes something that's comfortable. So even though YouTube in the beginning is like very uncomfortable, it became comfortable. So I think I'm in a place in my life where I want to be bolder. I want to be more courageous. I want to start scaling mountains again. I want to go explore again. And it's no surprise that I recently saw this reposted on my friend's story. You're not afraid of doing the thing. You're afraid of the feeling that might come up if you do the thing. Get in touch with your feelings, get better at sitting with and navigating discomfort, and you'll do more things like being bolder and more courageous. It's more often rejection, abandonment, failure, discomfort, embarrassment, or a whole host of other things that we're afraid of, not the actual thing. Work to get better at sitting with the discomfort that comes along with putting yourself out there. Its presence actually often paves the way to growth. The key is just to start doing. That's the only way. You experience the heat or embarrassment of putting yourself out there and realize, hey, it's okay. So then you try again, and sooner or later, it doesn't feel like that big of a deal anymore. So, get clarity on what you feel may be holding you back, acknowledge it, honor it, give space for it, and go out to do that thing anyway. To put my thoughts and dreams into action, here's what being bolder and more courageous actually looks like for me socially, professionally, and personally. As some of you may know, your girl has mastered the art of saying no over the past couple of years to be able to solely focus on what she deemed as important. But in this season of being bold and courageous, I'm training myself to say yes. If you've been following my vlogs on my second channel, Rowena, too, I've been saying yes to socializing, putting myself out there, going to events, and actually feeling very full and energized as someone who usually gets drained from being around others. Had I stayed my introverted, antisocial no saying self, I would never have come across the soul enriching conversations I was able to have and to form the connections I was able to form. On top of socializing, I've also been saying yes more to cool opportunities like creating my very own potato popsicle for a huge creator conference. This was actually why I flew back to LA. Shopify has an easy to use link in bio tool called Link Pop, so they teamed up with six creators to create popsicles. This is honestly such a pinch me moment because what's a potato doing in the presence of some of the biggest creators like Mr. Beast and Arak? When I first shared the news with my designer, shout out to Dre, check out her work website and Instagram link down below. She sent one of the sweetest texts saying, isn't it amazing that all the work you've put in from all the years of your life has led to a moment like this? Your name on a popsicle. Mm, tears. And since we've been working on some designs for merch, mm -hmm, hint, hint, we're able to send over these team potato graphics to be included on the packaging along with the guava flavored pastel purple potato pop. Thank you guys for making this possible. What makes Link Pop different from other Link and Bio tools is that it's designed to promote shopping from the start. For example, you can see here that as I check out to buy this popsicle for zero dollars, I can buy it directly without ever leaving the link in bio. In a nutshell, with Link Pop, you can send your visitors and followers to a curated collection of your best links. So if you've been meaning to be bolder and more courageous yourself in growing your business, you can turn your followers into customers by adding shoppable links to your page. To sign up for free, go to linkpop.com or the link in my description. 
Lastly, personally, when it comes to creating content, as I shared earlier in the video, I've been feeling a bit stagnant and uninspired, largely due to momentarily losing sight of my North Star, which is to give hope to my younger self that things can and will get better if you trust in yourself and something much, much greater than yourself. To unstagnate thyself, I've been thinking about what types of content I like to create. And one topic I've talked about all year has been trying commentary style videos. The intro of this video was my first mini attempt. I've also been outlining and researching for an upcoming commentary deep dive into the evils of TikTok that I can't wait to share. And yes, evil is a very strong word, but it's very appropriate and very necessary. And you'll see why. Another style of content I like to create more are vlogs. Even though I haven't been posting as much here on my main channel, I've been posting more vlogos on the second channel. I started this vlog channel on my birthday in December last year with the goal of uploading 52 videos for the 52 weeks of 2022. We're currently only on vlog two, but whether I was able to stick to my goal or not isn't the point here. The point is that I've started doing the thing of posting again and I will continue to do. Beyond content, something else I've been thinking about these days has been, what does it truly mean to listen to your heart? Over the past few months, I've been spending a lot of time with babies and they're just, they're just a ball of joy, doing whatever they want, whenever they want. Seeing this got me thinking to my childhood. What were things I naturally gravitated towards and what were things I wanted to do? Okay, so the thing that I want to try, I'm just going to say it and speak it to existence. The more I talk to people about it, the more it's out there. Before I say what it is, let me just share. In middle school, I did sports, I did drama productions. When you go to high school, you can still choose, right? So I still did a little bit of like the drama productions part where it's more speech and debate. There's actually like a real drama club, but then I was like, <laughs> whatever the cool kids are doing sports so let me play volleyball and so i did volleyball i did student body and i did the speech and debate thing it's exactly what you said i chose to do something or to not do something because it was cool or it wasn't cool and the thing i want to revisit now that i feel a calling deep within the depths of my soul is to try acting again I've been talking to friends who have been in the industry for decades. I've been devouring books, watching online videos from the greats like Michael Caine and Larry Moss. I've been looking into coaches, which is objectively not a big deal, but it's a very big deal for me because I've lived my whole life convinced that I can do everything on my own. All that to say, this is a very full circle moment because my mom was low key and a pretty big Netflix movie that was filmed at this very location. So to summarize this whole video, once we're able to reframe and move away from this need to constantly get our lives together, it truly opens the door for us to dream and to wonder. For me, that manifested as me wanting to be bolder and more courageous. For you, it could be anything. And as soon as we're moderately clear on what things we like to do, go out and do that thing. Remember, we're not afraid of doing the thing. We're afraid of the feelings that might come up if we do the thing. So lean into your feelings, make peace with discomfort, and go do that thing anyway. As our last parting words, I want to share what one of our dear Voice Hugs listeners wrote to us. I'm whole and my life is ready together. I just need to work little by little to make it more meaningful and fulfilling to me. And with that, it's been a while, my friends. I've missed you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Here is a voice hug. A vlog of this day will be on the vlog channel. When it's up, it'll be up. I don't know when. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye.